What's up guys, it's Subzi here and this is the Google Pixel 5. Now I've been using it since the day, pretty much the day it came out in the UK, I've been using it since then. And this is sort of my review-ish type video. I'm not really gonna do like a normal review because if you wanna see some more content on the Google Pixel 5, there are so many videos out there already covering so many different aspects of it. But this is gonna be sort of my take on the Google Pixel 5, like what I expected going into it. And what I found out the more and more that I use this phone, because there is some really interesting stuff that I didn't expect to be an issue or expect to, you know, like or find as fascinating as I did with this phone, mainly because, you know, I had expectations going into a Pixel phone, which I thought were cut and clear. But first things first, I am not going to talk about the camera at all in this video mainly because I've done an extensive camera comparison between this, the 4A, um, in like a 20 plus minute video, which I'll link in the corner. So I'm not gonna talk about that at all. So if you wanna watch that, go ahead and watch that. This will be everything apart from that. So let me just get started with the easy stuff to talk about, the stuff that are in my mind tangibles, things that are not biased to me, things that are just like cut and dry, um, good or not good. So the speakers, I'm just gonna give you a quick speaker sample now compared to another phone compared to the iPhone SE and compared to the Pixel 2 XL and here for yourselves. So although they do say it has stereo speakers, because of the airpiece speaker not having an actual grill, it's sort of coming through the, the glass, it's a really weird experience when the speaker actually put the volume up and you notice that it's all one-sided, but the screen on that side is vibrating a little bit. It's just, it's a bit weird. So I consume a lot of YouTube videos and music and everything on my phone and I use the speaker for that quite a lot of the time. So for me, this was the biggest disappointment going into the Pixel phone because coming from the Pixel 2 XL that has excellent speakers. And before that, I've had the HTC One X, which again had front firing speakers. I'm just used to phones with great speakers and this does get loud, so it has that going for it, but the clarity and the low end is just not there. And it's still better than some phones, but it's not as good as I expected, especially since this is their you know, highest end phone. I know it's not a flagship tier, but it's their highest end selling phone at the moment. It's just not that impressive. And let's just talk about cord quality now. So again, going back to the lack of the grill, so it uses the top half of the display. It just sort of vibrates that bit and it makes a sound and it sounds weird. So no matter where you put it, like close to your head, if it's like right there or up a bit, it sounds the same and it was weird. Like I've never used a phone like this. I mean, there are other phones that have this technology. Um, it was just weird to get used to because even now when I hold my phone up, it's sort of odd. Like I don't actually know where I should be putting it close to my face or it's just, it's a weird experience. It's not bad. You can still hear the other person quite clearly. It's just odd. I think the reason I think it's odd more than anything is because you have to, well, I don't know if you have to, but I tend to put it on my ear. Whereas with some other phones, I can hold it like a centimeter away. Uh, this one I'm actually holding on my ear, um, sometimes pressing down if I'm outside so I can hear better. It's a weird experience. And then the microphones. The microphones are actually pretty good. So nobody has had trouble hearing me either through um, like a speaker call or through the actual, you know, normal way of taking a phone call. Um, nobody's had an issue. And even with like heavy traffic or something in the background, I've had no complaints about audio quality from the other end. And people have said that it's pretty clear and they didn't even know that I was outside and sometimes. So I don't know if this is because of the quality of the microphones or because Google's doing some sort of background processing, but the actual quality of the like background noise reduction is quite good. Like it's surprisingly good, like not just quite good. But let's get into some more interesting stuff. So the hardware of this phone and the hardware, in my opinion, is amazing. What well, ish. So when you look at it, you see like a really weird texture to this. So it's a mixture of plastic and aluminium. Um, so it's like aluminium coated in some sort of like powdered plastic thingy, which allows it to have like a cutout for wireless charging and a really weird texture. So it's not rough, it's not smooth. It's 
textured. I don't know how to describe it, but just sort of listen to it. And compare that to the iPhone SE with the glass back. You can't even hear that actually. <laughs> but it's, it's weird, so it's not rough, it's just grippy. Not grippy. I don't know, it's... Um, imagine like micro particles and just mushing them together and you get like a texture. It's sort of like that. One thing that I don't like um, or that I miss is having like a power button which has a different texture. So with this, um, it has a different colour which looks awesome. But you can't really feel the difference between that and the volume buttons. That would have been nice to have like some sort of a like a pattern on the power button so you can like, distinguish it quite easy. But that's not there. I mean it does have USB-C so that's good. Of course Pixel phones have had that for some time. It has a single bottom speaker so it has two cutouts one's fake one's not fake um, so that's pretty much your only main speaker if you don't count the top one which I don't count anyway and of course the color I, I do love the color I am partial to this color quite heavily I know some people don't like it and um, well you know tough <laughs> I like it so for me this is one of the best looking phones that I would get um, not only because of the way it looks but the way it feels, like the rounded corners are like perfectly rounded to the shape that fits naturally in my hand and that comes along with the size. So I'm used to a big phone. I've had big phones since my first Android phone. So my first Android phone for the time was big. It had a 4.7 inch screen. It was the HTC One X and then after that I had the Nexus 6P. I was going to get the Nexus 6 but I didn't and I'm glad I didn't. Um, and then I had the Google Pixel 2 XL and now I have this. This is the smallest phone I've had in a long time and I love it. Like I love the size and I'm, I don't feel like I'm missing out on much because the height of the screen is pretty much near enough identical to the um, Google Pixel 2 XL. The only difference is width and that's only an issue for me in one scenario and that's when I'm using like sat nav and I've got it in landscape mode. Um, I'm not taking a selfie, I'm just, you know, showing sat nav in landscape. So in landscape mode, sometimes when like the sat nav brings up like a notification, it just blocks the whole screen. And on the Google Pixel 2 XL, you had like a tiny bit of extra space and that made all the difference. But mm, it's a trade off that I'm willing to make because it just fits so much nicer in one hand. And now when I use the Google Pixel 2 XL, which I still have to do in some scenarios, I use that with two hands uncomfortably. And I'm not scared of dropping this when I use it with one hand so I'm happy to maneuver this in my hand and like reach the corner if I need to and slide it back and forth and I did not drop it so that's good. But coming back to the hardware itself, so this brings me to one of the issues that I think I have with the Google team at the moment it seems. I'm not sure if it's quality assurance or just like defective stuff coming through or a lack of support or a mixture, but something is going on. So there's no doubt in my mind that I like Pixel stuff, I like Google stuff, I'm part of the ecosystem in some scenarios. So I use the Pixel phones and the Nest audio systems and stuff. But then I also have like Apple devices and Windows stuff and I'm not heavily invested, but I have been a Pixel person for some time and I'm not like ashamed to admit that because everybody has preferences and pixels are my preference just because of how they feel. So one of the things with pixel phones has been cameras, software and support. Like support for me has been fantastic. Up until I got this phone and I'm not sure if it's to do with the pandemic or if that's just going to be an excuse that gets used because every company seems to try and use that as an excuse for some sort of customer service response. Something has been different with this. So I've reached out about an issue which people have had about a panel gap because mine has a panel gap um, between the um, glass at the top and the frame underneath. Now I didn't notice this first and even when I saw the articles of some other people noticing this I didn't notice it on mine because even now you can't see it like it's not something you can see easily but if you look closer you can because it's only the size of like a fingernail. But that makes all the difference because that means my fingernail can go into it and it can actually lift the display quite easily and that terrifies me. Now I, I noticed this when I put on my case and I don't use my case often. I only use it in the car um, because of the, um, the magnet. I don't want to put the magnet on this 
and I use it when I'm running um, so I don't drop the phone by accident. But sometimes when I put this case on, the edge of this case um, hits the panel gap there and it just sticks inside. And I don't like that. So I paid for a phone that should be built to a certain quality, right? And Google's response or lack of response is annoying me on this because they haven't just failed to respond to the community. They haven't responded to my actual inquiry and it's been a couple of weeks now. And sure, there was some sort of a response in some shape or form, but that wasn't official. And the response to say that it's still waterproof doesn't bode well with me. Waterproofing or any type of like IP60 whatever rating is done by implementing seals. So you provide resistance against water and dust by sealing off components, right? So the fact that this can be lifted in my mind, that's not sealed. So I have no confidence with this in rain at the moment. And you know, I want a replacement. I want that to be fixed in some way, shape or form. Either give this back, get it fixed or get a replacement. I don't mind which way, but I want it fixed because I want to be assured that my phone is not gonna get water damage or anything like that because of a panel gap. And I know that sometimes this can happen in phones and it's not just to Google, it can happen to anyone and it has happened to other companies but it's the lack of response that's annoying me. And this is where I'm sort of conflicted right now with the Pixel phone, because in the past, their software support has been amazing to me and to other people. Now, not so much it seems, because not only that, there have been quite a few other issues. So on mine, um, it's gonna be hard for me to portray this, but just listen to these volume buttons. they sound completely different. And I don't know what that is. It just seems like one is way louder than the other. And I don't know which one's correct. I don't know which one it's meant to be and which one's the faulty one. And there's just so many small things that pop up and it just seems like there might be an issue in Google's quality control at the moment. And that sort of makes me glad that they didn't bring out a $1,000 phone because if this existed on a $1,000 phone, that would just be terrible. I mean, it's bad enough that it exists on this phone because this isn't a cheap phone. It's cheaper than most phones, sure, but it's not a cheap phone. It's not the Google Pixel 4a. It's like a mid higher end tier thing. But yeah, I'm gonna stop complaining about that because that would just take me in circles again and again. And I will be chasing up Google on that because I do want something done about that. I'm not gonna hold off on it. So then we come to some of the good stuff and let's start with the screen and wow. Okay, I didn't know that I'd like it this much. Like I knew the screen was gonna be 90 hertz and I knew it was gonna be AMOLED still and I knew it was gonna have an always on display and the symmetry. Like you don't know how much you love it until you use it. It's something so tiny. You wouldn't think that between this and a phone that has like one millimeter more difference on the bottom would make that much of a difference but when you see it when you see how symmetrical everything is it just it looks so nice like not only the gap between the left right top and bottom is the same but it's the curve around the edges so some phones have symmetrical gaps on either side and top and bottom that's fine but then their curves of the screen are not the same as the curve of the phone this one has the same like bezel around the whole thing and that's what makes this in my mind so special. Like it just feels so good. And I know some people have had issues with the 90 Hertz not being 90 Hertz most of the time. I haven't had that issue for me. Most of the time it seems to be running at 90 Hertz and I can tell the difference between 90 and 60. I can't tell the difference much between 90 and 120 on some phones, but between 90 and 60 I can. And I've had no issues with that. So that's been amazing for me. And again, like, like I said, the actual height of this phone makes it so that you can fit most content on this, like quite more than some other phones. And it's so compact. And for me, this is like the perfect compromise and not so much compromise because even that it's got an always on display is something that you don't realize how much you want or how much you use it until you don't have it. So I went from this and I spent a day with a different phone that never had it. And for me, I didn't expect to miss that that much. But you don't know how much you like the always on display until you don't have it and you look at the phone. And for example, here's the iPhone SE and there's nothing on the screen. 
then here's the Google Pixel and look, it has stuff on the screen. Um, it turned on, but there you go. You don't know how much you miss it. So I was so glad when I came back to this and I saw the clock, I saw the notifications, I saw the um, now listing music thing. It was just such a relief to come back to an always on display after only a day of not having it. So I'm so glad it has it. And from the display, we come onto battery life and that's like a really good segue because the display is 90 Hz, 1080p and the battery life is amazing. So if they went with 1440p or like 120 Hz, they could have sacrificed battery life, but the compromises they've made in both the processor, the screen, um, in terms of like refresh rate and like pixel density, pixel resolution, that all adds up to like a really good battery life. So I've never had to recharge this every day. And I have sometimes, but not because I've had to, it's never run out. So before this phone, what I normally did was, you know, charge it up overnight, my phone, um, or charge it in the morning whilst I'm getting ready. With this phone, I've sort of changed my habits. I charge it before going to bed, like to like 90 or 100. Sometimes I don't let it hit 100 just because, you know, battery health and everything. It pretty much stays within a couple of percent of that by the time I wake up and then by the end of the day it's still really high so I use this quite intensively. Like most days I'll go out in the morning for a run, uh, some days I'll use it for sat nav, I'll have music playing all day, um, I'll be using YouTube throughout the day, this is my main YouTube device. I watch so much stuff on this, I consume so much, I use GPS on this and I haven't killed it ever in a day and for me that's, that's pretty awesome. So I wouldn't consider myself the heaviest user, like I don't play that many games on this, I don't do that many processor intensive stuff, but I do do a lot of like high intensity or high interval stuff and I haven't been able to kill it and this isn't just me, like a lot of people haven't been able to kill the battery in a day. Maybe if I was using 5G it might be different, but I don't have 5G in my area so I can't test that, but for me, yeah, the battery on this has been like an A+. So the performance, some people saw this when it got leaked or when it came out and saw this Snapdragon 765G or whatever it's called. They saw that and they thought this is going to be like a bad phone because of that. Now I'm going to link a video here that I did with the Google Pixel 4a which has like a much lower end version of the 700 series and that for me performed excellent for what I use it for. This is better than that in every way in terms of GPU, CPU, RAM. So as you can guess, I've had no issues with this whatsoever. And I think most people are not going to find any issues with this. Like if you just consider what you do day to day, if there's anything apart from like 3D intensive stuff, like some 3D games, it'll be completely fine. And even on the Google Pixel 4a, like the 3D games I played on there, most of them were fine, apart from a few which weren't optimized much. but the fact that it could run on that processor and this one's better. In the two months or so that I've been using this, I've had no issues whatsoever. And if you do, maybe that's your use case. Maybe for some people it's not great, but I think for most people that's a non-issue because phones have come so far in terms of optimization and the actual speed of mid-range phones that it doesn't seem like the race to get to the fastest phone is that relevant today because it's good enough and that's pretty much all you need good enough because as soon as you go above what you need you start to sacrifice other stuff so if you go to like a snapdragon 800 series processor if you're not going to utilize the power of that but you have it you're going to sacrifice your battery life for no reason like if you drop down to this mid tier and you use more of it your battery life is going to be better than the other one which is going to consume more power so just think of what trade-offs you want to make and which one's more valuable to you that's all I can say about that. So let's jump back to some of the things I was expecting that this doesn't have. Um, and that's the squeeze for Google Assistant. I'm not a fan of having my phone except the like hot word, so the okay G word, because if I do that, then everything in my house lights up. So the Google Nest Audio Mini, the phones I have that have that keyword set up. I was used to squeezing it on my phone and talking to my speaker. So I had the two. Now when I say the keyword, I have everything answering me back and I have four things lighting up and it's just not pleasant. So I do miss the squeeze for the Google Assistant and I just really wish they'd bring that back. So I have said a lot of bad stuff about this phone so far and that's because I just wanted to highlight that for you because 
I love this phone. There's no getting around that. This for me is the perfect phone right now. Like there's no phone that I've felt, held, used um, that has been better for me. This is the perfect phone for me today, this year, next year. It just has everything that I want and everything that I need. And there's just nothing that can draw me away from it at the moment. Sure, there are ways that it can get better and sure the quality control seems to be not there just yet. But that's something that can get better and maybe Google will respond and maybe there'll be like a um, RMA process or something like that and that could get sorted out. But as of yet, this is the perfect phone for me that I can't keep. And that's what frustrates me the most because for a long time, Google Pixel phones have been the perfect phones for me. And I know they're not the perfect phone for everyone, so I'm not gonna say that, but for me, they have been. And they've just been so easy for me to recommend to so many people, but it's harder and harder for me to recommend the Google Pixel 5 to other people until I know that Google's quality control is not an issue. And maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion, but it's just the amount of stuff that I've noticed with mine, like even the camera lens at the front doesn't seem perfectly aligned. It's just everything's adding up and um, I don't know what to think about that. So for now, I can't recommend this phone unless you know you don't mind like a tiny thing being wrong with it because it is an amazing phone in every other way and I love it to death but it's sort of that thing that you love that you know you have to give back or get replaced and you just don't want to but you have to it's sort of in that weird spot and if we consider the price so in the US the price is a bit iffy because you have the Verizon 5G tax on top it's not really a premium but you do pay $100 more for Verizon uh, millimeter wave support in the US so just bear that in mind if you're over there because then it becomes less compelling. But at least here in the UK, it's a really good deal and you normally get it with some sort of a deal. So I know when I got mine, I got a free pair of Bose QC35s and like regularly you can find a deal with like Google Nest Audio chucked in or something like that. And it just ends up being like 100, 200 pounds cheaper overall. And by that point, um, it's pretty comparable in price to the Google Pixel 4a or the 4a 5G in some scenarios. So if you put all of that together, this for me is like the best overall Android package that you can get for like a good price range. Like if you want to balance the good stuff and the price, if you don't want to go all out on one or the other, this is like the best even distribution sort of thing that you can do. Yeah, I can't find anything majorly bad about this that I don't like, aside from the, you know, quality control stuff. But I could just have a faulty unit and this could be a non-issue for like 95% of the people. Because as we know, the internet is really good at expanding like the issues that it has to everyone. So say two people had the issue with the phone, you're not gonna hear about the 99% of people who don't have the issue, you're gonna hear about the 2%. This could be like that and I could just be one of the unlucky ones because not many people have had this to their phone. So it could just be me, uh, it could be a quality control issue thing but I can't say for sure. So at the moment I'm just gonna say that I have the issue and for me, I'm gonna get a replacement. So that's pretty much been it for my Google Pixel 5 review type thing. I know it's been quite long and I know that I haven't actually covered a lot of the typical stuff that you see in a review, but I don't really want to because there's tons of that out there and I just wanted to give you guys what I actually thought about this and you know, what I think about my perfect phone. But if you guys have a Pixel 5 or you have any of the other Pixel phones from the recent years, let me know what your experience has been with like quality control and software and bugs and everything. Let me know if you're one of the people who do have issues or you're one of the people who does not have issues. If you got lucky or either way, unlucky. Um, let me know in the comments below and just let me know your thoughts on the Google Pixel. Like, do you still think it's a good phone with everything that's come out since then? Or do you prefer some of the other stuff like the Samsung Galaxy S20 FE or the iPhone 12 mini, which again, is not that much more expensive than this. I think it's the same price as this, um, but let me know in the comments below what you guys actually think. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button so you don't miss any future content that I do on this or anything else. And don't forget to click the bell icon if you do want to get notified about the content. But as always, it's been Subsy here and I'll see you guys next time.